With Volume 7 over, I wanted to discuss something that could be very relevant to Volume 8, and that is the possible return of Adam Taurus and Roman Torchwick. Quick side note, I know the title says Adam could return, but I'm just going to talk about both. Anyway, I know what you're thinking. Are you stupid? We literally see both characters die on screen. How could they possibly return? Well, I'm not going to say that you're wrong. I mean, we've even got official confirmation that Adam is dead. However, that doesn't mean that he can't come back. And the answer is the Relic of Creation. Now, let me explain how. In Volume 5, we're introduced to four magical tools given to humanity by the gods, and given more information about them later on in Volume 6. There's the Relic of Choice, Relic of Knowledge, Relic of Creation, and Relic of Destruction. We don't know much about the Relic of Choice or Destruction, just at their appearance and possible location. In Volume 6, we get to see the Relic of Knowledge in action and exactly how much power it has. The Relic of Knowledge can answer any three questions per 100 years, unless it is about the future. While in effect, the Relic releases a spirit, or something, named Jin. And while Jin is out, time is frozen for everyone but the user and Jin. Originally, we could assume that the other three relics worked the same way. However, with Volume 7, we see that is not the case. Now, I can't find the exact quote of what was said, but according to the wiki page, the Relic of Creation can serve as an unlimited power source, though it is limited to performing only one action at a time. It is currently holding all of Atlas in the sky. This obviously answers the question of whether or not all relics do the same thing. Or does it? Now we have to ask ourselves, does the Staff of Creation only serve as an energy source, or can it actually create things other than energy? Possibly it can create any one thing at a time, so whoever wished it to create infinite energy used its power there. So if someone were to take the Staff for themselves, they could, for instance, create Adam or Roman. But by doing that, the energy would stop powering Atlas and thus could cause it to fall. It'd be a neat gimmick if that's how it works, but we don't know that for sure. I mean, for all we know, that's not even how the relic works, and Ozpin lied to Ironwood. I mean, he's done it before. Multiple times. So now, we're left with four options. Option 1. Ozpin lied about how it works, and it actually functions the exact way as the Relic of Knowledge, except this creates three things every 100 years. Option number 2. The Relic of Creation can only serve as an energy source, powering one thing at a time. Option 3, all relics can be used as an energy source, much like what's happening with the Relic of Creation, and still have their main function, whatever that may be. Option number 4, the Relic of Creation can create any one thing at a time, no limits on what it is. In all honesty, all four of them are very viable options. However, what I think is most likely, and will help confirm my theory, is either the first or the fourth option. I mean, number three could definitely work as well, and would really be interesting to see if maybe the each relic gives a different kind of power, but that's just me speculating without any evidence. Back to number one and four. As much as I would like the first option to be true, there's just no evidence to support that Osmond lied. And in a way, the fourth option is the most dramatic of them all, which means for a more compelling story. Originally, with the mindset that the main characters could create three things at a time, I imagine them bringing back both Adam and Roman. However, it seems like things won't look so good for one of them, since most likely, only one person could be created at a time. Now, the final question we have is who? Well, for all we know, it won't be either of them, and it could be an entirely different person, or maybe even just a weapon to kill an immortal. You know, the one who's about to destroy all of Atlas on a whale. So it might be a good idea to create that instead. And side note, I think that would be a really cool idea, to have the heroes create an ultimate weapon to kill Salem, to kill an immortal. It would make the heroes seem very strong at first, but then the villains would grab hold of the staff and, let's say, wish for a second Salem. And there goes your immortal slaying sword, and now you've got to say hello to your second immortal goddess. But again, that's just me speaking out of my ass. What I'm saying is that Ruby could go in many different directions when dealing with who or what they want to revive. And in the nature of the potential power of the staff, it'll be a constant player in the story continuing on until the end. But regardless of who else or what else can be created, let's say it's going to be either Adam or Roman. Now let's talk about Adam first and why he might have a reason to return. I think the first and most obvious reason is to correct his story and character. At the beginning of the series, we see him as a ruthless leader with a goal. 
If you look at it from his perspective, he could even be seen as the good guy. He could portray a very utilitarian mindset. Now, what is utilitarianism? Essentially, it means when you are given a moral choice, you will try to find the solution that will produce the greatest good for the greatest number of people. However, I think that it would be more fitting to call him a negative utilitarianist, since their goal, similar to a regular utilitarianist, is to minimize the amount of pain and suffering from the most amount of people. That's essentially what he's trying to do for the faunist. Until it wasn't. Things changed when he killed Sayina Khan, the current leader of the White Fang at the time. He then lied about the murder, saying a human killed her. That goes against everything he stands for. His goal was to save the faunus and bring equality to all. Through some questionable means, yes, but he would never have killed one of his own and manipulate people into war. That literally doesn't make any sense. Like, at all. Now, I'm not saying Adam was a nice person before he killed Sayina, but what I'm saying is that he wasn't evil. That was a straight-up evil act that goes against everything he stands for. After that, in his fight with Blake and Yang, he suggests that Blake and he were a couple back in the day. However, from what we've learned in earlier volumes, uh, that no, they weren't. All that was suggested was that there was a teacher-student bond there, nothing romantically. Possibly, he could have imagined that. Meanwhile, to Blake, there was nothing romantic going on which would have been a cool plot point to tie in with his character. Essentially, due to his trauma with the Schneed Dust Company, maybe he became mentally ill. Like, the more he pursues a goal, the more delusional and obsessed he gets. That makes his sudden character change with the Faunus, and his sudden thoughts of romance with Blake make sense. The issue with that is we have nothing that suggests any of that, so it's simply headcanon. However, after I finished writing this video, I happened to stumble upon the scene from Volume 3 that could possibly have been hinting at the fact that Adam slowly got more and more mentally ill and insane as time went on. I had someone very dear to me change. It wasn't in an instant, it was gradual, little choices that began to pile up. He told me not to worry. At first they were accidents, then it was self-defense. Before long, even I began to think he was right. What I'm saying with all of this is that with his return, they could finish his story, or correct it, depending on how you want to look at it. And they could even give him a redemption arc for all we know. Actually, I feel like that's the only way that they can bring him back with justice. Obviously, I wouldn't want them to make him a goody two-shoes, but I want to be able to sympathize with him. Maybe he learns about Salem's plans to take over the world and realizes that the world, including the Faunus, is in danger and enjoys the heroes. They say the enemy of your enemy is your ally, after all, I think. I think that would cause a really cool and emotional scene between him and Blake, and Yang too, I guess. They'd probably hate him, but at the same time have PTSD. And let's say he actually tries to become a better person, maybe wanting some mental help or whatever, but they're not even giving him a chance. It would be up to them if he gets better or not. That would make the heroes be the antagonist in that situation. Personally, I think that it would be a great idea to introduce the Faunus into the plot once more, but in a completely different way than they've done before. Anyway, on to our next choice, Roman. Now, personally, I think that his plot was pretty good and consistent all the way through, right up until his death. If their original plan was to bring him back from the dead, then I think that killing him off was one of the best decisions Ruby has ever made. Because of his death, Neo has been absolutely crushed and hurt beyond words, literally, and gives her a lot of development. Neo's quite possibly my favorite Ruby character, but I do have to admit, I'm worried for her character. It seems like she's become yet another flat ruby character much like many others have become in the recent volumes. And all she craves is revenge. However, if they do decide to revive Roman, that would not only add a new arc for his character that wouldn't feel forced, but it would also do the same for Neo. Imagine this, a lost child who feels nothing but despair and rage because the only one that ever supported, helped, and cared for her had died, or rather, been murdered. She only saw her guardian, and now that he's gone, she now sees nothing. So now she seeks the one thing that she thinks will help her, and that is to get revenge and kill the killer. But what if her guardian came back? She now knows what it's like to be lost and found once more, which then results in her growing as a person. I think that would be the perfect character arc for Neo. With Roman back, we would then most likely be given both his and Neo's backstory, which I think we've all been waiting for for years. I feel like we all have a similar idea as to what happened in the past. Neil was lost and alone as a child, and then she found Roman, or rather he found her. Because Roman is an actual good person at heart, from what I'd like to believe anyway, he took her in. Yeah, he didn't raise her in the best life, I mean growing up to be the adopted daughter of a mob leader isn't the most pretty life, 
but he gave her the best life he could offer. Or maybe you think they're lovers, I, I don't know. I envision a more father-daughter relationship between the two, but I guess we'll never know the truth unless Roman returns. Now, will we? But now, the question is, will Roman get a redemption arc? Well, I hope so. But will he join the heroes? I don't really know at all, actually. I feel like his character could go in 10 different directions, so it's kind of hard to say just which one I feel would be the most likely to happen. I guess I can say a similar thing with Adam, but based on my specific reasons why I feel like there's a reason to bring him back, I would think that his character would be best to get a full-on redemption arc. Another reason that applies to both so long as they join the heroes is that to fight Salem, they'll need an army, or multiple armies. Luckily for both Roman and Adam, they've got quite the following. Yeah, Adam kind of tarnished his relationship with the Faunus, and the heroes already have Blake. Actually, Adam, what can you offer for the heroes? I guess he's good at making amputees, which I guess is helpful? So in the end, personally, I would prefer Roman to come back because I do like the direction that they could take him and Neo in. But Adam would also be really cool. Both, I think, would work in the plot. Roman to add more depth to Neo and him and help the main characters by giving them a potential army. And then Adam just to correct his character and add some more conflict within the main character's group. So what character do you think they'll bring back, if any at all? And if you say, Pierre, I'm gonna get really mildly frustrated, considering, in my opinion, they don't need the staff to bring her back. Maybe I should make a video explaining that. Anyway, if you like this video, please consider subscribing and hit that like button. It lets me know you like this kind of content, and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye.